In December 2007, we went to a public meeting at Pitt in Alumni Hall, what used to be the Masonic Temple, and here folks had a chance to learn more about the upcoming replacement of an old bridge. Uh, I'm Dan Cessna with uh, PennDOT District 11. It certainly gives me great pleasure to welcome everybody here today. Um, it's nice to be standing at about the midway point with our project in, in terms of time. We were this is an exchange of information, a chance for people to ask questions, make suggestions, and listen to the engineers and contractors. A lot of folks think that engineers only design things and build them, but we actually have to work with the public to convince them that what we're suggesting is better and also listen to them and take their input in and, and maybe modify the solution. It could be much different after you consider all the public input. The bottom line that I want to stress is we are just very proud to be here replacing what in the city of Pittsburgh is one of the worst structurally deficient bridges that exists. What this is all about is the Boulevard of the Allies Bridge over Forbes Avenue near the southwest end of Oakland. When this bridge was originally built, um, it was probably grand in its time, but you know, its time has passed and it's basically looked like a very deteriorated piece of infrastructure for the last 20 or 25 years. The weekend we will be scheduled to close Forbes again will be the weekend of January 19th. On that weekend we're going to demolish and remove the steel structure from the existing Boulevard of the Allies Bridge. You would think this is an old bridge, it's you know, classified as you know, being deficient, and that would necessarily mean that the whole bridge is ready to fall down, but it's not. These girders are, are in fairly good shape and they're difficult to bring down, and that's what we're doing today to, to try and bring them down. That cold January morning, we met John Myler, PennDOT's lead engineer on this job. Basically on the project, I'm sort of here to oversee the contractor, make sure that they're doing it in accordance with our specifications and according to the plans and, and making sure it's safely done for, for both the workers and the public. A lot of people ask, how is that going to be done? Is it, is it going to be a boom is what someone asked me. I, no, it's not going to be a boom. It's going to be more or less just a, a steady, silent hush. They've taken out uh, two of the piers to make it weaker. And then they're also cutting the flanges. And, and in effect, what's going to happen is make the, the steel fail by pushing it over and the steel will just fall over. That simple. If you're looking to come out there and look at it, it's going to be like watching paint dry. It's not going to be an exciting uh, venture to watch. There's one big machine that initially gets most of the attention. That's, that's what they call a hoe ram. That's going to go up to the abutment and hammer out the abutment that's currently supporting the, the girder itself. So the hoe ram pokes and prods and digs and pushes, but it's slow going. Nothing wants to fall. <laughs> we get so tired of waiting, our camera isn't rolling when the big girder falls just a few feet onto the mats. I've never taken the bridge down in this fashion. Typically, they're cut up into pieces and a crane lifts them away, so they build them well back in the old days. So certainly a testament to it. It was, it was a little bit more to bring down than, than we expected, but that's, that's, again, good because we were able to control it. Slow is, slow is better than fast. Fast or slow, John seems to enjoy all this bridge work. I love it. That's why I love staying here in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, it, it's, no, it's no secret that all our bridges are, are aging and, and deteriorating. That's one of the things that uh, really makes me happy to live here is we've got plenty of bridges for me to, to fix. A lot of people will be surprised Monday when they drive through here and there's no bridge overhead like there was for the past you know, 80 plus years. Much brighter, I guess you could say. Not all old bridges get knocked down and hauled away. Sometimes engineers can save and revive an old bridge. One snowy January day, we went out to Somerset County to see the King's Covered Bridge that was getting a state-of-the-art rehab. There's less than a thousand covered bridges nationwide. There's 221 in Pennsylvania, and they have 10 in Somerset County, and this is one of them. Crews from Allegheny Restoration were hauling out pieces of steel that had been holding up this fine old bridge since the year 2000. But actually, no major traffic has used the bridge since 1930, when the road was paved and a metal bridge was built beside the old structure. The, keep in mind, this bridge was built to carry horses and buggies and things of that nature. So when the car 
when, when, when the loads increase, these bridges were not designed for that. So a lot of these bridges are simply bypassed. We met two structural engineers there who both work for a firm called Gannett Fleming. Samer Petro, originally from Jordan, who's project manager, he figured out how to save this bridge, and Justin Peasley from West Virginia, who's been the inspector in charge here. You don't see many bridges that's rough sawn, cut lumber, and uh, has the, I don't know, I just love the historical essence of it. The signs on the bridge read 1802, and uh, we think that's wrong. We researched, we found records that said this was constructed in 1857. We know it was owned by the King's family, and uh, we know that the King's family used it for many different things. They used it as a barn at one time. So they stored their tractors in here, they had sheep in here, and there was actually a barn gate at the end of the bridge before we started the restoration. It looked like in a terrible shape. It needed rehabilitation, it needed saved, essentially. We did the engineering behind it, we modeled the structure, we used snow, we used wind, we used uh, pedestrian live load, we did it according to code. And each piece we tried to salvage because that's the key in preservation work. Repair instead of replace and keep as much of the old structure as possible. Both of these guys got their degrees at West Virginia University. The arch, the arch was done nicely, huh? After I finished my master's, I stayed on with the university and I was involved in some of the research. And some of that research involved uh, using this rebar made out of glass to strengthen historic structures. It's the same material that's used in the space shuttles. So we're integrating the new with the old, but we're doing it discreetly. This is a post that was deteriorated on the top. One way is to replace the whole post, but this is not how we wanted to rehab this bridge. We wanted to keep as much of the original material as possible. So what we did, we notched up to here and we removed the de deteriorated part and we joined the new oak material with the old using the rods. And you can see right here the adhesive that we used. Inside this post, there are four rods like this. And that's what's holding up this new post. Engineers have terms for all the parts of a bridge, and they assume that you know them too. But just remember that the main wooden beams that span the stream here are called the cords. There's a top cord and a bottom cord. In 1906, when this truss bridge was almost 50, an arch was added then to give it new strength. The problem was on this bridge was when they put the arch in, they didn't do it correctly. They did not have the benefit of engineering because this bridge was not built with engineering design. It was built like your typical house, the wood framed house. And so when they put this arch in, it terminated at the lower cord. It did not go all the way down to the stone abutments. This arch should terminate at the abutment because the arch is always in compression. The arch never sleeps. It's always in compression. But when they terminated on the bottom cord, it put this thrust on the bottom cord. It broke the cord. And so our correction to that was to let the arch in. We took the arch and we notched it into the lower cord. So it went through the lower cord and set down into the stone abutments. And at that location where I cut the cord, I reinforced the cord with glass. And so by understanding better the science of bridges and the benefits of new materials, these engineers have given this original structure new life. The covered bridge is a romantic bridge. And uh, it's, it's, uh, on postcards, and it used to be the kissing bridges. So, you know, we want to save that part of our culture. And that's why we do these things. It's going to be wonderful. You take your family out here on the 4th of July or something, you know, you have a nice barbecue or a picnic here, and you get to see the beautiful scenery of King's Covered Bridge. And there's a lot of fish around here. It's good for trout. It's just a wonderful site. It's a wonderful structure. and. Uh, that's its future use, is for the public to enjoy their heritage and to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm.